Hello my lovelies, happy happy Thursday, I hope you're all okay, hope everybody is well. Uh, I don't normally do a Thursday but Sarah and I swapped because I, I was away all weekend with uh, Crane Craft. So, uh, so you got me today, um, we're going to do a block uh, today, we're doing block of the week obviously, duh. Um, but we're going to add a little bit of red work to it as well. I'm going to show you how you can mess around with a, um, a really traditional block and how you can Add some red work, add some embroidery, makes the things a little bit different. Oh, what's that on the floor? Excuse me just a second, I'm stepping on things. Um, oh, scissors are on the floor, disgraceful. Um, hi Freddie, how are you? Uh, hi Anne, uh, we did have a lovely night last night. Yes, um, seven margaritas, surprisingly not hung over today. Very good lemongrass margaritas as well, it's delicious. Surprisingly not drunk either. I think it was, uh, they were deceptive, <laughs> but we had a really, really loved time. It was so, so good to meet up with the girls and see them and just have a little catch up. It was lush. Really, really lovely evening. Um, first things first though, uh, Fred, yeah, it's really, really windy here as well. It's yeah, proper blowing a gale. I, this, this weather can go do one. I don't mind it being cold, maybe a little bit of snow, but this horrible, wet, windy nastiness, don't like it. Don't like it at all. We're going to do the advent first of all then, my darling. So we're going to go over here. Ooh, I did remember to bring it with me. There we go. So we're going to do number 21. Okay, so everybody's in the pot. Hang on, just get in there and give them a good stir. Good stir around. Like that. I put my hand like that just so I can't see in the pot. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to go with uh, that one just there. Oh, it is uh, number two, three, four, and this is Vicky Clark. Vicky, well done. Vicky, have you won already? I can't remember now. Might have done. Might have, had, might have a double winner. Uh, another double winner. And you have won a advent panel. Okay, so that will be, well, you, you won't, go, obviously it'll be for next Christmas now. You can make it up for that. So number 21 was an advent uh, panel and it goes to Vicky Clark on 234 on the orange. So that's for you, my lovely. Well done. Well, tomorrow we will, um, hang on, I'll just come back over here a second. Tomorrow, which obviously is the last day for the shop being open, we will go live and we will do like Friday, Saturdays and Sundays um, all together. Um, so we will see you tomorrow for that one and we'll do, do all the final ones. Right, let's pop that out of the way. Um, back over to the overhead, so I'm gonna show you this block. So this is a Sawtooth Star, which is um, incredibly traditional, you know, lots, you know, really, nice and easy a very easy one to do uh but it, i always think it's a bit and i've done it as a 12 and a half inch block you know you can make them bigger smaller you can make small small tooth stars to go inside and then you've got like a double star and everything lots and lots of things you can do with them but um i was playing around i i forgot we even i'd made i'd even done these these are the red work templates that i did a couple of years, two or three years ago now, to make um, little red work baubles, you know, on felt and everything. Um, so these are the templates. I think they are on the website. I'll check when I get back. And I've done nine of them. So you've got you've got the presents and a bauble, a tree, all those little ones there, little like Fair Isle, Scandi looking one. You've got Christmas wishes, cal uh, candles, and then uh, Nadolig Clowin, which is, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, which is uh, Merry Christmas in Welsh, okay? So um, the, I'm pretty sure these are on the website. I think they come under Red Work Bauble templates, but if not, I will put them on. And I thought, well, it's a shame just to keep them just for the Red Work Baubles. What else could I do with them? So. This is what I thought we'd do with them, okay? Um, I'm happy for you to um, enlarge these, make these smaller, blah, blah, blah. So um, all I did was, I've done the little Christmas tree in the center of this one, and I thought, you know, a few of these would make a beautiful Christmas runner. I know this is a little bit late for this year, but it's red work. Red work should be slow and steady and everything. So get it ready for next year. <laughs> but what you would need, so you don't necessarily have to do the red work. You could just do the saw to star. You could use a big focal print, you know, focal print in the center. You could make a smaller sawtooth, as we were saying. But if you want to make this size one, very, very simple block, okay? You are going to need from your background fabric, a six and a half inch square for your center. You are going to need four, three and a half inch squares, which are your corners and you will need four 
six and a half by three and a half rectangles, which are going to make your um, flying geese. You will then also need eight three and a half inch squares from whatever colour you are using for the points of your star. And if you're going to do the red worky bit, you also need a little bit of interfacing. Now, I know a lot of people do red work without interfacing, but I like it. I think it stabilises the stitching. I think as well, it helps hide if you've got any loose threads like this that, have, that don't want to stay, you know, tucked in or anything. You can't really see them through because it gives makes the, the fabric a little bit more opaque. Um, so I do use interfacing. So first things first, we're going to look at the red working bit. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to iron. I've cut a five and a half inch um, square of, of firm interfacing okay I'm just going to center that up like that you could go six and a half but you really don't need to okay you could just I, I tend to go a little bit smaller because I'm only going to be red working in the center so hi Carol how are you ah oh, thank you darling thank you who's that coming on like Jean as well lovely lovely hi Jean there we go so I'm just fusing that down making sure it's well stuck okay it just helps a little bit and then you want to get your template and we're gonna I'm just gonna plug my light box in if you don't have a light box okay you can absolutely put the template up against a window um, but yeah light, light boxes are easier <laughs> and I mean this was quite an expensive one but you can get them for like a tenner on Amazon they're flat and they're brilliant they you use a USB um, plug on them and they work really really well so I'm going to choose which one I'm going to do. So let's let's do the little bauble for now. It's nice and easy. We're not going to obviously red work the whole thing. We'd be here for a couple of hours. Just find the center. So I'm just get, finding my center point by folding it in half and in half again and just folding over that corner. So I've got a center point to give me a rough guideline and I want that to be right in the center there like that. And then using whatever marking method you choose to, you know, to use. Hi from Malta. Hi Margaret. How are you, lovely? Oh, is it a bit? Hope it's a bit warmer in Malta than it is here. I'm using a Frixon because I'm going to be stitching over and it's going to iron off anyway. So I'm using a Frixon, and you're just going to trace it out. It could be that you use you know a chalk pencil or a washable marker, just whatever it is that you choose to use. Okay, and just trace it out on the right side of your fabric. Okay, like that. So do the little top there, like that, and the hook. Add in the little bits. So yeah, you can put as much detail. You can personalise these as much as you want as well. You know, add the those bits on like that. That's my snow. Those would be little French knots. There we go. Oh, I don't know who's just come in, but somebody's just come in. Oh. That would be little sausage coughing his guts up by the sounds of him. Here we go, going out like this. There we go. So just draw it out, okay? Little man is not a well bunny. He's really not. He's got this horrible cough and cold that's going round. Grumpy little sausage he is. There we go, like that. Nearly done. Okay, just draw the oh, missed the last one. <laughs> Didn't actually mean to draw it all out. I got I got all meditative, and you know you could maybe draw out your outside circle as well. You could you know make these as simple or as complicated as you like. Uh, you know add more than one element, add more than one ball ball. Go. Oh, I think my pen's running out. <laughs> I can hardly get it to work now. There we go. Okay, so draw it all out like that. It's 70 degrees, but blowy. Oh, I know, but 17 degrees, that would be nice. So I've just drawn it out, okay? Just use that template. Let's just get rid of the light box out of the way. And like I said, we're not going to stitch the whole thing. We're just going to, I'm just going to take you through just very, very quickly. Red work. Um, red work can be done in any colour. It doesn't have to be done in red. It could be, you know, blue, black, green, whatever. You know, it's just traditionally it was done in red. Nowadays we do it in, do it in any colour. Popped a little knot on the end of my thread. I'm using a cotton perle and a chenille needle. And it's mainly just back stitch. So I'm going to come up from, I'm going to try and do this really nice and close. 
I quite like red work because it's very meditative. Meditative, I can never say that word. And then I'm just gonna make my first little stitch. So you want to, you don't want them to be too big, but you don't want them to be too small because you'll be there forever. Um, just try and keep them a consistent length. And then I'm gonna come up slightly away from where I went in and then drop down in the hole there. Okay, and then I'm gonna come up slightly further away like that. Hopefully you can see this. And then I'm gonna drop back into that one there hole there try not to have any gaps if you you know gaps show up on red work so try not to have a gap trying to go go back down the hole that the thread is gone and then back up a bit further along okay <coughs> oh excuse me oh this better not be little sausages cold or Sarah Jane's cold that I'm getting I do not want this over Christmas there we go up that one there like that and you just follow the lines that you've drawn out. It's really, really simple to do. It's you know quite a nice little hand stitching project you can sit and do in front of the TV. Oh, there we go, okay. You can see I'm just covering the lines. And once you've covered all of your lines, you would then just give it a quick eye and get rid of the fricks on, okay. I'm not gonna do any more of that because it red work is just basically back stitch. Thank you, Jean. <laughs> Uh, it's in single flows and figures and really blowing go vein. Oh, I'm not, uh, it's same here, lovely. It's like four degrees outside and it's proper blowing a gale. It really is. There we go. So just carry on. You just, you know, draw it out and then just stitch away. So what I'm going to do is just drop this two to the back. And what, we, what, what we'll do is make the sawtooth now. So through like that. Like I said, just follow the lines. Now you see, I've got a little bit big there, which when you're doing curves, you want to keep the stitches a weeny bit smaller because otherwise it gets a bit angular. So keep them a little bit, like when we're sewing curves on the machine, you, you go a couple of little stitches and, and move. Keep your stitches a little bit, bit smaller when you're doing curves, okay? French knots, I'll just show you a quick French knot just in case you, I'm sure you all know. So I'm going to come up with where the, the, one of the dots are. And depending on how many times you wrap, depends on how big the knot is. So I'm going to wrap three times, one, two, three, like that. And I'm going to go back down. This is really hard to do in the air. Back down just like a couple of threads away where I came up. Okay. I tend to put my thumb on the thread here to hold it and pull through. And just before it gets all the way through, I put my thumb on top of the knot like that and pull. And you get a nice, neat little French knot. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. So because otherwise we'd be here for, you know, that would probably take me about 45 minutes, an hour to, to embroider. You love red work. It's so relaxing. It is Marion, isn't it? It's a really nice, gentle one. Um, and these templates are nice and little as well. So they're quite quick to do. So that's my six and a half inch, which is my center. Okay, that's going to be the center here. All right. We're going to make some flying geese and you need to make four flying geese. So you're going to take one of your six and a half by three and a half pieces and two of your three and a half inch squares and you're going to draw a diagonal line on the back. Now, I'm sure you all know how to make flying geese. This is the traditional way of doing it rather than the no waste, which makes like four at a time. But sometimes I like to go back and do them, do them the traditional way. I do like the no waste method. It is quick, but this is... This is not too shabby this way. I quite like this way as well. So I've got diagonal lines on my background, and not my background, on my coloured fabrics, okay? And I'm going to line this one up on the left-hand side, like that, so it's going top left to the centre, all right? And we're going to stitch, as always, just this side of that line, just a thread this side, okay? That'll give you just the... Um, what's the word? Um, it's like the scant. It gives you that scant so when you fold it over, you're not losing anything. Um, right, over to this machine. What's that? And your Christmas go to red work. Yes, absolutely love. Yeah, it's it's lovely a bit of red work. I enjoy it. It's a good job you enjoy it because I just gave you a load to do for a chander, didn't I? <laughs> or crate craft. So I'm just stitching just the other side of the line. It's literally the needle runs along the side of the line rather than on it. And it gives you that teeny tiny little bit of wiggle room, which makes it more accurate. 
Okay. Yeah, okay, here we go to here. Now, as ever, I always check to make sure that I've done it right before I cut anything off. So I'm gonna iron that over like that. And as we've said before, some people like to leave this with a, a flying geese or when you snowball in something, um, it gives, you know, they think it gives a bit of stability. For me, it's a little bit too much bulk. Some people will take out just that little bit of excess and leave this bit. You don't, you can do anyway, or you can do, oh, I do, just chop them both off. So about a quarter inch away from the seam, I'm gonna chop them both off like that, okay? Um, I do I don't think it's necessary to leave that under there, but you can absolutely do that if you want to. Hi, Carol, how are you, lovely? So we're gonna add the other one on now to the right-hand side, like that. I'm proper teaching you to suck eggs today, aren't I, with flying geese? And then we're gonna stitch down that way, okay? So again, back over to the machine, like that. You could absolutely, if you wanted to, put the whole block together and then do your red work yeah you, know, you don't have to do the red work beforehand um you could do it after if, if you want to that's fine okay down we go there like that oh my cork's in there it's threaded and back over again just check that that's gone correct which it has uh, just gently press that out there's my flying geese and so when you've done your flying geese they should measure the same size as the starting rectangle so six and a half by three and a half okay so I'm going to chop that bit off and then I'm just going to double check that I've not gone at all wonky so tiny tiny little bit there which just stretched a bit as I've ironed it and you see there and like that it's all sorted okay you're going to make four of these so i've already done that because you don't need to watch me make four flying geese but you're going to do make four of those okay and then we can start putting the star together this is a great one these um sawtooth i think look great as scrappy stars as well if all of these are different colors against one background fabric that works really well so we're going to lay these out so that our flying geese sit round the center square like that and then you're going to use your three and a half background pieces to go in the corners like that like that and those go in there i think this probably needs to be a bit higher doesn't it there we go like that okay there we go so we're going to do that so we're going to just quickly sew these together in rows so that one's going to go that side that one's going to go that side that one's going to go like that and that one's going to go like that and then those are going to go in like that so as you can see this is really quickly you could make this into a cushion yes absolutely hi melba how are you lovely so um yeah this would be it's a 12 and a half inch so you could then put a little board around maybe of whatever fabric you've used as the star um and make them into cushions yeah it'd be really pretty for christmas wouldn't it so just quarter inch all the way down there and then the other side, you, know, you could add you know, little Christmas messages you know, and stuff around those centre circles if you wanted to fill it out a little bit more. There we go, there's that one. Uh, let's just do the centre one. So little trick when you're, um, I don't know if you can see this, when you're sewing your, uh, your um, what's the word? flying geese oh my goodness I can't think of the words today you've got a little I'm just going to mark it here you've got a little cross of stitching as long as you stay this side of the cross so within the seam allowance it doesn't matter even if you're doing a quarter inch you can always just duck around that a little bit and then do another quarter inch you won't lose your point okay so I know this is not finished but I can finish it this evening can't. I've got a lot of lot of wrapping to do before the husband gets home. I'm gonna, I've got, well, not a lot of wrapping. I need to get his cut few presses done before he gets home tonight, and then we'll do all everyone else's wrapping. We tend to do Christmas Eve. So, oh dear, I can hear a little coughing baby. Hi, darling. Hello, sweetheart. <laughs> 
how you do oh he's got such a cough bless him he does actually look human today though love him he was so washed out yesterday when i saw him he was a proper poorly little baby you're a bit more yourself today lively oh thanks yeah since i've got him tonight thanks yeah. he slept for nine hours last night excellent yeah excellent Left for you right careful baby. hi baby oh you want to do you want to come and say hello just really quickly to the ladies come and wish them you want to come say hello no you don't want it come here come granny no you don't want to come granny you got to come say hello come see jonah on here Jonah, I can see Jonah. There we go. Say hi. Can you say Merry Christmas? Yeah? Can you, look, this is little oh. Jonah there. He's a little bit big boy now, aren't you? Hey? You're a big boy now. Say Merry Christmas. Oh. No? You're just fascinated by the fact you can see yourself, aren't you? <laughs> right, Granny's got to finish the square. Yes. Go play with that. Go play with that. Uh, mummy. Go play Courage. with Mummy. Good boy. Let's go. Um, right, oh, let's just yeah, finish yeah. this off. <laughs> there we go. Mm. Okay. Oh. Uh, what the size of the fabrics? Oh, I said them all at the beginning, lovely. Um, if you go back and watch the beginning of the video, Marianne, I've given you all the sizes right at the beginning, hun, okay? Um, there we go. So we're just going to flip out there and flip out there. Oh, I did lose my point. That's because I was watching Little Sausage. Oh, I did as well. I went, oh, wonky, never mind. <laughs> and then where's the one I, other one I did? There it is. So I've ironed them outwards on those ones. So I want to iron it inwards on this one. Like that. Like that. So that we can nest those seams. So that's going to sit in there like that. Okay. And then my bottom one would sit there. Oh. Like that. There we go. Okay. And you've got your little... Um, sawtooth star so when you sew that one to that one I'm not going to do this because I want to pick that because I went really wonky and it's going to annoy me <laughs> when I stitch that one to that one you can nest your seams then okay as long as you sew them in opposite directions all right yeah I'm not going to finish putting it together because I'm going to pick that one this evening and make it right <laughs> oh, oh I know bless him he's <laughs> so full of cold so full of cold so anyway when you've sewn the three rows together you get something that looks like that you know, and like I was saying, you could then, you could add extra bits, you know, you could take, um, maybe do some extra long stitching around here when you're quilting it, maybe just do a nice big red, sort of like Scandi long stitch around there and down through, you know, a little bit of hand quilting for a change, that might be quite nice. Um, you know, so lots and lots, you know, I just thought it was a nice way of using a little bit of these little red work templates for a change because it's been a long time since I've even looked at them, frankly. Um, and you've got a few little options there but i'll make sure they're on the website okay in case anybody would like them um so that's it for today it's a relatively quick one uh because it's a really nice easy little block to do still i mean i reckon you could knock up a christmas cushion before before monday easily <laughs> um uh we will see you tomorrow we will do the final bit of the advent and just uh wish you all merry christmas and everything tomorrow before we then shut for Christmas. So we are shut in tomorrow at four o'clock and we're not back open till the 2nd of January. Um, I did yesterday put the new April retreat onto the website. So if you do decide you'd like to join us on that, that other date, um, for those of you who've been desperate to come and not been able to get on because they've been sold out, <laughs> um, you can pay the deposit online over Christmas. You know, if somebody says, oh, you know, if the husbands or daughters or something suddenly go, what do you want for Christmas? get them to pay your deposit <laughs> that's on there okay guys um if not we will catch up with anything with people um in the new year but we'll see you very briefly tomorrow to do the advent okay so um he's getting really really loud so i'm gonna go and i'll see you all tomorrow take care guys bye